you've been following us uh, for the last five years, you've noticed we haven't spent a lot of time on all the math and the calculations. It isn't just circles. There's squares and things that need to be calculated, uh, stairs and roofs and all kinds of stuff. When we started making, trying to make some decisions about what we wanted to have, earth bag was the last thing. We, we looked at all kinds of things, starting with straw bale and steel and green block and things that you fill. It's a foam that you fill with, fill with concrete, cob and, and other things. So we finally settled on earth bags. Today I'd like to focus primarily on what we do for foundations to get things started. How do we lay things out? When anyone sets out to do a structure, consider where the structure is going on the property. 10 acres, hey, you've got a lot of space. You can put a lot of these things around. But if you have a smaller, like a one acre plot, how far away is it from the neighbors? How far from the fence lines? How far from the pig farm that smells really bad down the street? Also to which way you're allowed to put that structure in. You may have to have that front door pointing towards the street. That's the kinds of things you need to consider when you're plotting for your placement of your structure on your property. Also too, you want to consider the kinds of materials that you may have around your property. The things that you have that's there. Dirt. If your dirt's really good, you've got some clay and maybe some caliche like we have in ours or what's called calcium. Um, or maybe some rock or something that's fairly tough uh, to be able to build with, great. If not, you may have to haul that type of material in, which means that's dump trucks and other things so that you can fill the bag. As we lay out the ground, you have to think all the way through the roof. So you may need some support in a particular area. Like we use around our doors, we put in posts. So we know that we're gonna be coming up to those posts with our bags as they go around in the circle. So I have to plan for that. Also too, we like to put in what we call cleats that connect. So we can go a few rows, but when we come up to a window or a door, we have to place that cleat in and have to remember to do those things. So it's nice to sit back, take a look at your spot, think through this all the way through the roof. What are the next steps? I think sometimes to have square rooms, they're nice and they have a almost a neat and tidy feel to them. It seems like with the roundier rooms, it's more of a creative environment. Easier to think of good creative ideas in a roundy room, I think. To have a round room, it's, it's, it's really room. unique. A lot more fun. Oh. Look up at the round ceiling and you're like, every morning you wake, open your eyes, you look at the round ceiling. It's pretty cool. It's very relaxing. Um, for us to be in a circled room um, where there aren't, the, aren't these really sharp edges. Um, I don't know what it is. It's, it's organic or something. Uh, wait, are my ears getting pointy? Am I growing hair on the tops of my feet? Now, I'm not looking for a geometry lesson here in circles, but we do want to cover some of the main points. Circles are two-dimensional shapes that are circular. They have a center to a circle, radius, which is half of the circle. That means that the distance from the outside of the circle to the inside of the circle is the same in all directions. Diameter is from edge to edge of the outside to outside as it passes through the center. That's the diameter. The circumference is the lineal feet of the outside of the circle. And why it's important to us as earthbaggers is that we want to determine how much bag we need to create one of our structures. Uh, we use like 12 foot, uh, 14 foot circles. Those are the ones we typically make the earth bag bedrooms that we make out here. Calculating the circumference, just go to the internet websites. There's plenty of calculators out there. Now making a circle with earth bags is really easy. Okay, first you drive that stake into the ground, leave it high enough that you can tie a rope or a string on the top of that. Go half that distance. If it's a 12 foot room, for example, it's a six foot radius. You tie one end to the post and one end to a stick and travel all the way around the stake with a taut circle drawing on the ground. Now when we fill our bags, we fill our bags so they're about four inches thick. So you have about four times three, which is three rows, right? Three rows of bag equals a foot. So that now you can calculate how tall it is. You'll say, I want to go eight feet in the air. You know that it's going to be 24 rows of bags. This topic can be easily covered in drawings. Let me show you. 
There are so many different types of stair designs to cover. Let's just stick with the most common. Most stairs are made of wood, steel, and concrete. There can be freestanding with no wall support on any sides of the stairs, or they can be attached on one side or both. I like stairs that are attached on one side with no support. These are called cantilever. Let's cover the basics of stairs like foundation and run and rise and tread width and railing. As with any structure, it must support the weight of a load at any time. Stairs typically rest at the top, which is called the deck, or the landing, which is at the bottom. Consider placing a footing at the bottom of the landing. The run is the horizontal distance from the landing to the deck. The run can be split into one or more landings. It can be curved or spiral. Once the run is determined, this measurement is fixed. Adding landings can compact the footprint, but the run is a constant. The run is horizontal. The rise is vertical. To determine the rise, measure the distance up from the landing's horizontal plane to the deck's horizontal plane. This is also a fixed distance. The angle from the top of the deck to the landing along the run is the pitch. The pitch will determine the tread width and comfort of walking up and down the stairs. If it is too steep of a pitch, there may not be enough tread to step safely. It may also be uncomfortable to ascend or descend the stairs. You don't want to feel like you're walking up and down a ladder. The rise and run may also determine the headroom. How many of us have conked our heads on the deck or the floor above while using improperly designed stairs? The minimum distance for safety is six foot eight inches measured vertically from the top of the step straight up to the bottom of a beam, a landing or a deck. The width of a staircase should be about four feet or more. This is the typical egress for safety. Wider is better. Remember how much trouble it is to get that king size box springs up the stairs? A spiral staircase may only have a two foot width. The Capitol building will have steps that stretch a city block. Really, it's the size of the tread that matters. Tread size is the space that your foot rests on when you place your foot on the step. A typical tread comfort is about 10 inches. Treads may have a nosing that allows the foot to travel under the vertical plumb down from the next step. Handrails allow you to travel safely up or down stairs. Most handrails have a typical distance of about 44 inches from the nose of the tread to the top of the handrailing. Stairs should have at least one handrail. Bryson's staircase doesn't have a handrail. Uh, we'll be installing that one soon. We don't want anyone falling. Let's use an example to put all this stair stuff together. If the run is 133 inches and the rise is 105 inches, we want to have about a 9.5 to a 10 inch tread. Let me take my shoes off and count this up. We get 14 steps with the rise at 7.5 inches per step. We've looked at the basics of circle design and stairs. Let's check out roof construction. Just like the stair basics, roofs follow the same idea of rise and run. The idea is this, that a pitch is created when one end of a level line is raised. We measure roof pitches using inches in a mathematical ratio. Yeah, it's that math stuff again. For example, the run is 12 inches horizontal, and the rise is whatever your desired pitch. Let's use 6 inches vertically. This creates a triangle with a perfect square corner, and triangles are the typical geometric shape used in roof construction. The ratio is displayed like this, 6-12. This means that for every foot of the run, it rises 6 inches. Let's apply this to a roof example. The building is 10 feet wide. This is also called the span, by the way. We want to place the pitched roof equally down the center of the building. To find the center line, divide the 10 feet in half. The run is 5 foot. We will use the 612 pitch. There are 5 12 inch increments in this run. Multiply 5 feet 
times the rise of 6 inches to create a 30 inch total rise. We can use these triangles to create roofs, but how does all this roof stuff like fit together? This is one typical design for a roof. Top plates sit on top of the wall. The ridge typically runs right down the center of the peak of a roof. The rafter travels from the peak at the top down to the wall. The tail is what hangs over the wall or beyond the wall. The bird's mouth is the notch at the bottom of the rafter. Height at plumb, also known as hap, is the vertical distance from the top plate to the top of the rafter at the bird's mouth. The seat cut, if possible, matches the width of the wall and acts as a secure point to attach to the rafter. Wow, there are so many parts to a roof. Let's just focus on the common rafter. Common rafters are all the same. I guess that's what makes them common. So, how are rafters measured for length? I do recommend an online calculator to get a rafter length, but it's always a good idea to know some of the math behind these things. A rafter's length is determined from the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I hope I haven't brought up any painful memories. Let's do this. The run is 5 feet or 60 inches. 60 times 60 equals 3600. The rise is 30 inches. 30 times 30 equals 900. That's the B part of the equation. 3600 plus 900 is 4500. Now the square root of 4500 is 67.082. And of course I use the calculator for that one. That is 67 inches. And 0 .082 is really close to that 160. How do we set the rafter on the wall? There's a notch at the tail end of the rafter called a bird's mouth. Funny name, huh? Make a mark for the hap and another plumb cut mark going down. If at all possible, try to use the width of the top plate to match the length of the seat cut. This allows for the underside of the rafter to meet the exact corner of the inside of the top plate. Now a tail would need to be added to give a roof an eave. This is calculated by using the hap moving horizontally out from the wall to your desired eave width. Let's say 24 inches. So what do you do when you have an earth bag for a top plate? The top of the bags vary in elevation and are not level. That's a typical. And the roundness may not be a perfect circle. So to overcome these problems, we use a cleat platform to attach the rafters to the top of the earth bags. This is how it works. It functions as a regular cleat that connects the bags together and it serves as an adjustable platform to raise or lower a rafter to its correct level height. there are professionals in your area, please consult them if you're not a professional yourself. Um, it's just so important to have uh, safety first and nobody gets hurt and you're always doing the right things uh, when you're building, then um, everybody's safe. There's a great deal more that can be explored concerning foundation layout, stairs, and roofs. We're only touching the basics. If you're interested in webinars that e explore even deeper the foundations of earth bag basics, and you would like to have your questions answered like directly in a webinar setting, there's an option available on our Patreon page. There'll be a link in the description. Occasionally I'll do more of these brief videos upon request. Please let me know and comment below. And that runs. Our family moved from the city to the country. Thanks for taking part in our adventure. We have new videos every Friday evening. If you would like to help us out, you can like this video, share it, subscribe, or support us on Patreon. See the links in the description.